Hi boys and girls. Hi boys and girls. I hope you are well this nice Sunday morning. Auntie Anne, how are you doing? I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I hope you remember what we have been looking at these past few weeks. Mm -hmm. We have been looking at Joseph, who later on, as we will recap, is somebody's great grandson. But before we go there, we remember that Joseph has had a journey from the time when he lived with his brothers and his father and he was so... Do we remember the four Ps that Auntie Anne spoke about? Yes, we do. The first one was the pit. The pit, yes. Joseph was thrown in a pit, almost killed by his brothers except for two who stopped their brothers and later on he was sold to a person named Potiphar. Potiphar. Yes, and we recall that Potiphar's wife falsely or wrongly accused Joseph, told a lie which made him be thrown in prison. prison. And there in prison, we saw how there were two people whose dreams he interpreted. One forgot him and later on, two years after, remembered him and he was restored to a position called Prime Minister. Yes. So now, last week, we looked at how there was a famine in the land and Joseph's brothers were sent by their father to look for food. They didn't recognize him, but Joseph didn't treat them unkindly. He tested his brothers to see if their hearts had truly changed. And we ended on Simeon being kept behind all in Joseph's tests and his brothers going back. And now we're going to see today what happens next as they come again to Egypt and visit for a second time. And if you remember in the series, we have been seeing Christ through the life of Joseph and we will continue to see that. So boys and girls, I would like us to sing a song. But before we do that, I will ask Auntie Anne to open in a word of prayer for us. Jesus loves me. I love Jesus. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you, dear Lord, for today. We thank you for your goodness and your kindness to us. We thank you for your love. Indeed, it is so evident how we can find forgiveness and change of hearts and that we, oh God, if we believe in Jesus, will be forgiven of our sins. Help the boys and girls to be attentive to your word. Help them, oh God, to avoid the mistakes that people made in the past, but to please you by trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. Dear Father, we want to pray now that you be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So boys and girls, before we go into our lesson today, I would like us to sing, Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. So the words will be there. If you are sitting, please stand up. Um, there are two parts, so some people will continue singing while others will be, is it echoing or repeating or following behind? Yes. So boys and girls, stand up and let's sing Behold What Manner. Behold what manner of love the Father has given us.
nice, wasn't it, boys and girls? I guess now we can take our seats and listen to God's word and see how the Father's love just shows itself in the story and in the life of Joseph. Take your seats, boys and girls. Well, boys and girls, Auntie Lulu gave us a recap or she told us what we have learned before this episode that we're going to have right now. And as you can see, all these things, remember when Joseph was a young lad, he had two dreams and they taught him that one day he would be ruler. Even though the brothers tried so hard to kill those dreams, God made a way for Joseph. And while Joseph was going through the trials, perhaps he didn't see how God was going to fulfill his promises to him. But God did, and Joseph now stands in the position of authority. And his brothers came the first time and they bowed down to him, asking for the food, and, and he's now in a position of authority. And his dreams are coming to reality. But Joseph wanted to test his brothers. He wanted also to find out how his father was doing because he hadn't seen his father for many years. He didn't know whether his young brother was alive or whether his older brothers had mistreated him as well. And so he tests them and they come back with his younger brother, Benjamin, and he treats them very well. He invites them to his he invites them to his home, and then he set a big meal before them. And for Benjamin, he gave him five times what the brothers had to eat. In other words, he gave him a very large portion of food. And remember, this is in a time when there is hunger. It's a time when there is famine. And so Simon is, Simeon is also released from prison and he joins them and now Joseph doesn't eat with them but he also doesn't eat with the Egyptians he eats on his own so there are three groups of people there's Joseph eating on his own because the Egyptians could not eat with the Hebrews or any other people so the Egyptian servants and the Egyptian officials were eating on their own. Joseph was eating on his own and his brothers were eating on their own. And Joseph instructs his cup bearer or his chief servant. He says, put my cup, this cup that I'm drinking from, into the sack of the youngest brother, Benjamin. He wanted to test and see whether their hearts had changed, whether they were repentant and sorry for the things that they had done. And you know, Joseph at this stage had not revealed himself. He was using an interpreter. You know what an interpreter is? Who is an interpreter, Auntie Lulu? An interpreter is someone who translates. So if you want to speak to someone in a language that you are not familiar of, you have a third person who is going to convert or to translate what you say into the language of the other person. And when the other person speaks, they'll translate it back to you. So for example, if I want to speak in English and Auntie Anne speaks in Bemba, someone who interprets, who convert English into Bemba and Bemba into English. Yes, so the brothers could not realize that Joseph was able to listen and hear what they were saying because he used an interpreter. And we see this in Genesis chapter 44 and 45, okay? We, we see all this story happening. In Genesis chapter 44, verse 17, it says, But he said, Far be it from me that I should do so. The man in whose hand the cup was found, he shall be my slave. And as for you, go up in peace 
to your father. Well, boys and girls, you know what happened? When these people left, Joseph told his servant to put the cup in Benjamin's sack. And then after a few minutes, they had traveled a few minutes, he sent his servant to say, go after them. And when you catch them, tell them, the one who has my cup will be my slave. Okay, so when they reached, he says, why are you such bad men? You stole my master's cup after he fed you. And you know, they were so shocked. No, we didn't do such a, we would never do such a thing. They were so certain about themselves that they even said, if you find the person who has your cup, you can kill him, let him die. And so they quickly all put down their sacks and the search began. And that is in, in chapter and, uh, 43 and 44. And so they put down their sacks, boys and girls, and they started searching from the oldest, that's Reuben, down to the youngest, that was Benjamin. And as they were searching, they were not finding anything, finding anything. But when they got to Benjamin's sack, boys and girls, guess what? The cup was there. Do you think the elder brothers wanted Benjamin to die? No. They pleaded and said, no, do not harm him. We'll go. And they all went back to Egypt with Benjamin. Even though the servant said, no, no, you go. I'll only take this one who is guilty. He'll be my slave. But they said, no, no, no. And they went before Joseph. And Joseph pretended that he didn't know them. And then you know what, boys and girls? I'm sure they were talking amongst themselves. They must have been saying, you see, we told you, we shouldn't have killed Joseph. You see, now whatever happened to Joseph is backfiring on us. Now we are suffering the consequences or the result of our sin. Oh, boys and girls. They were speaking in Hebrew and they were talking and Joseph could understand what they were saying. And when Joseph said, no, no, all of you can go. I'm just going to keep the man who's in whose hand my cup was found. Oh, boys and girls, you know what Judah did? And Judah was the one who sold Joseph. Judah was the one who said, let's sell him and got him out of the, the, even though Joseph was crying and pleading for his life, Judah would not listen. But here is Judah now um, saying to, to, to Joseph in, in verse 18 of chapter 44, then Judah came near to him and said, oh my Lord, please, let your servant speak a word to my Lord in my Lord's hearing and do not be angry and do not let your anger burn against your servants for you are even like Pharaoh. My Lord asked his servant saying, have you a father or a brother? And we said to my Lord, we have a father, an old man and a child of his old age who is young, his brother is dead, and he alone is left of his mother's children, and his father loves him. Then you said to your servants, bring him down to me, that I may set my eyes on him. And we said to my Lord, the lad cannot leave his father. His father would die. But you said to your servants, unless your youngest brother comes down with you, you shall see my face no more. So boys and girls, this was the conversation that they had with Joseph. And so when the time came for them, they brought along Benjamin. And now this has happened. And you can imagine the anxiety, the worry 
that they have, what will happen to Benjamin? Well, boys and girls, we'll have to wait till next week to know what happens to Benjamin and his brothers. So for now, boys and girls, we say bye. bye.